Okay, so th we're just going to learn one little thing today, and that is slant or oblique asymptotes. Okay, now in the past we've always said if the exponent on the top is bigger than the exponent on the bottom, then the horizontal asymptote will be going to infinity, either positive infinity or negative infinity. Now that's true unless the degree of the numerator is one more than the degree of the denominator. That is the only time you can actually find an asymptote with the top degree bigger than the smaller degree. Now, the way it works is when you always have one degree less on the bottom and you divide the two out, you will always get the equation of a line. That equation of that line is your asymptote. It's that simple. So it's a pretty simple concept. And that's why we don't have to spend too much time on it. Now this one is clearly um, one smaller. Now you could take x and divide by every one of them, but let's just for the sake of this is how you're going to do most of them, is we're going to put it in long division. 2x squared plus 3x plus 4. Because most times you're going to have like x plus 2 or x squared plus 3x plus 5. and you, So you're going to have to do long division anyway. So we'll just practice the long division if we put that there. Okay, now we want to always get rid of the first one. So we're going to multiply by 2x. That would give me 2x squared. That gives you 0. And you subtract, right? Just like long division of grade 4 or whatever. Okay, and now I will bring down the 3x. Okay, so now I'm going to multiply by positive 3. So I have 3x and you get 0. Now, whenever you get <coughs> something x plus a number, you actually don't have to keep going anymore. Okay? But for just this one, I'll show you, if you do keep going, you get a remainder, right? So we're going to multiply. We got, gosh, I, I can't go anymore. There's my, right? There's nothing I'm going to be able to do. So you would get right here 2x plus 3 plus the remainder over the divisor. So this is the remainder over the divisor. Now, when you divide by positive or negative infinity, do you see how it will make that zero, right? As x approaches positive infinity. So we just have to do this. Okay, now the way you're always going to graph them is just like you would graph in grade 10. How would you graph 2x plus 3? Well, the 3 is the y int. So you put that. And then this is the slope. So you're going to go up to over 1. Okay, draw a point, and then you can draw, actually you want to draw a dotted line, right? So you just draw your dotted line, and through all the other stuff that we're going to find out, you'll be able to draw the graph. Okay? So just one little change if, so procedure to finding slant asymptote. Okay. So the first thing you want to do is check the denominator is, do you guys have this written down? No. Check denominator is, or denominator um, degree is one less than numerator. Okay, we know how to find out all the other horizontal asymptotes. This one, just check for that. If it is, use long division, get this. And Rx over Dx as, oops, I'm oh, sorry. Sorry, guys. This is Q should always be, or Qx will always be M x plus b and rx over dx as the approach will always equal zero. So 
obviously this will equal just mx plus b. Okay, just remember this is always y int and this is always slope. Okay, so let's just do one example of finding intercept or, uh, asymptotes and then we'll do one more question to finish off the unit. Okay, so how would I find all asymptotes? We might as well do that. So vertical x squared, when does x squared minus 9 equal 0? So an x equals plus or minus 3. Okay, horizontal. Okay, so we still want to do the same test we've always done before, since if when limit x goes to infinity, there would be no horizontal asymptote. But we do have a slant asymptote because top degree equals bottom degree plus one. So yes, we do have one. Okay, so let's use long division on it. Now there's just one little kind of thing you always have to watch out when you're doing these is make sure if there is a term missing, you put it in there with a zero. So do you see how this counts down nicely to 3, 2, 1, 0? Make sure they always do that. And if they don't, put a 0x squared in there if it's missing. But you see this one is, this is x squared. There should be plus or minus 0x minus 9. Now that does help a lot when you do long division because then you don't miss something, as you'll see right now. So let's do it right here. We got 3x squared minus 8x, 3x cubed, sorry, minus 8x squared plus x minus 3. We're going to divide it by x squared plus 0x minus 9. Now remember the goal is always getting rid of the first term in division. You want to subtract out nice. So that always dictates what you're going to do. So I want to multiply by 3x to this. All the other numbers may not be nice, but as long as I get a 3x squared first, I am happy. Or 3x cubed, sorry. So I got 3x cubed plus 0x squared plus minus, sorry. Why is there a plus there? What's going on here? Okay, um, so that should be minus 27x. Okay, I see what. Okay, so now remember you're subtracting, right? So you will get negative 8x squared x minus negative 27x is plus 27x. Okay. Oh yeah, what am I talking about? Okay, I was doing my uh, number, right? I just forgot to add them. Okay, now we want to get rid of the negative 8x squared, so I will multiply by minus 8. So that will give me negative 8x squared. The rest I don't really care about anymore at this stage. I guess I should have brought down the negative 3 there. Okay. But at this stage, I always quit. But I just want to, we'll finish it off, negative 8x uh, minus 0x and then plus 72. So as long as I get a 0 here. Now, I know I don't have to keep going because I get my mx plus b. Okay. So 
because this is all remainder at this point, and remainder divided by infinity will always go away. So this is my slant asymptote. So slant asymptote is 3x minus 8. So if I was to plot that, I would go negative 8 on the y, and then I would go up 3 over 1, get another point, and then I would draw a dotted line. Okay. So the graphs will have at most two of the three types of asymptotes. Okay, so you got your vertical asymptote, right, as x approaches a number. Okay, for horizontal asymptote, if the top degree is less than or equal to the bottom. Degree, y will approach a number. And slant asymptote, if the top degree equals the bottom degree plus 1, it will approach y equals m x plus b. Okay, and just uh, just to reinforce this, right? It can cross. Yes, it cannot cross. Okay, so we'll just do one example. Again, I'm going to give you the first and second derivative instead of taking time to go through all that. Okay, so the first one, a domain. What can we say about the domain? X cannot equal zero. Okay, B intercepts. So if we do y int, now for y int, we always do x equals zero, right? But x cannot equal zero. Hence your domain, right? So no y int. Okay, so if you uh, just put an arrow, that'll tell you why when you look at it later. Because I just so that kind of gives you a night. That's why it's nice to establish domain first, because maybe it'll help you later. Okay, let's do uh, x int. So y. When does y equal zero? So that's when we're dealing with a rational expression. It's when the top equals zero, right? So when will the top equal zero? Okay, when x equals 1. So 1 comma 0 x int. Okay, I'm actually going to put a box around no y, y int, so I look at that later. Okay, C, symmetry. Okay, so we want to put negative x in and see how that works out for us. Now, um, I expanded it, but you don't have to. Okay, so we just want to put f of negative x in. So that would be negative x minus 1 cubed over negative x. squared. Okay, so that's the same thing as negative x plus 1 cubed over x squared. So that is neither the same equation or negative of it 
if that was a negative x minus 1 cubed, in, then it would have been, so there is no symmetry. Okay, D, asymptotes. I wonder if this one will have a slant asymptote. Probably. Okay, so let's do, first of all, our vertical. Okay, we said that x equals 0 would be our vertical asymptote. Okay, now I want to just check both sides. So let's go limit as x approaches 0 from the left of x minus 1 cubed over x squared. Okay, and what would that be? Give me a number. Okay, so if I put that in there, the top will give me a negative, right, over a small positive. So that would go to negative infinity. Okay, how about as... Limit as x approaches 0 from the right. Okay, so what number would I be looking at there? 0, 0, 1. x minus 1 cubed over x squared. Okay, so that's still going to give me a negative up top over a small positive. So that's going to negative infinity. Okay, so remember we're looking at something that's going to be going like this. Put a box around that. Okay, will there be a horizontal asymptote? Okay, no. Therefore, we need to check for slant. Okay, it is. Now, with slant, this is the, I guess, bad thing about it. You actually will have to expand it. Because how are you supposed to divide? And when you expand, okay, you get x cubed minus 3x plus or 3x squared plus 3x minus 1 all over x squared. Okay, so let's divide it out. Okay, so I can put an x there gives me x cubed. Okay, then I'm going to go minus 3. Gives me minus 3x. Okay, and then I know to stop there because I have my... So we have a slant at y equals x minus 3. So we've got a... Okay, we're at minus 3. And we're going to go up 1 over 1 to get that slant asymptote. I'm going to put minus 3 there. I'm going to put a box around that. Okay, so you guys have next page to work as well. I'm going to keep extending page because I can. Okay, um, next, E. Intervals of increase and decrease. 
So f prime of x, first derivative, turns out to be x minus 1 squared times x plus 2 all over x cubed. So therefore, we have CVs at 1, negative 2, and 0. And remember that 0 is our horizontal asymptote, right? So as we draw this, put f prime x there. So I have defined this number line. I got uh, some negative 2s over here then 0, then 1, and I'm going to put my asymptote through there before I forget. I can even be very redundant and label it VA. Okay, so I'm going to test negative 3. Okay, that'll give me, because I'm squaring it, negative 3 minus 1 will still give me a positive. Negative 3 plus 2 is a negative all over negative cubed gives me a negative. So that's a negative over a negative, which is a positive. Okay, test negative 1. Okay, so that will give me a positive again, because it's squared. Negative 1 plus 2, that gives me a positive all over a negative. So that is a positive divided by a negative, which is a negative. Okay, I guess uh, 0.5, one half, so 0.5 minus 1, that's going to be squared, so it's positive. 0.5 plus 2 is positive, all over 0.5 cubed is positive, so we get a positive there. Okay, and then I will test 2. 2, that's going to be squared, so it's positive, 2 is positive, all over a positive. Okay, so we've got increase, decrease, increase, increase. Okay, so we've got decreasing from at negative 2, comma, 0, increasing. Be careful here. Do not just go and, well, this one's obvious. People are going to go negative infinity, comma, negative 2, right? And then union. This is where you do not want to go 0, comma, infinity. It's 0 to 1, union, and then 1 to infinity. Because 1 is not increasing or decreasing. That is a slope of 0. Right? So that's why we can't. Okay? So be careful here. Make sure that you're splitting it up there. Okay? So that's my intervals done. F is local max and min. So we got a max at f of negative 2, and if you plug that into the original equation, you will get negative 27 over 4. I forgot to put a box around this. It's important stuff. So this is a local max at negative 2 comma negative 27 over 4. AKA negative two and then negative six and three quarters. Helps me do my number line a little bit better if I actually or if you change it to a decimal, you'd get six negative six point seven five. Okay, last thing, G. Concavity and inflection points.
Okay, this one is a beast of a derivative. So f double prime x, like it's it's a lot of work. F double prime x, and that's it's going to be six over x minus one, all over x to the four. You think with that little answer, how bad could it be? But it's uh, it's a lot. It would drive some people to tears. Okay, CVs, what are they? 1 and 0. Okay, so we draw our number line, we put 0 there, 1 there, make sure we are putting our asymptote down. Let's try negative 1. Okay, so negative 1 minus 1 is a negative all over a positive. So I get a negative there. If I want to try like a half, I will still get a negative up top and a positive below. So that's a negative. And if I want to try 2, okay, I will get a positive on top positive on the bottom, so I get a positive. So sad, sad, happy. So we're concave down, negative infinity, comma, zero, union, zero, comma, one, and we're concave up, one comma infinity. Inflection point is at one. F of one, if you put that in, you get the answer zero. So at one comma zero. Now the fun. Okay. Okay, so starting right from the beginning, what do we got? Okay, we got a vertical asymptote at zero. Okay, uh, I got no y int. I do have an x intercept at 1, 0. x int, 1, comma, 0. Um, no symmetry. I got a slant asymptote at, so that's 1, we'll call this like negative 3. And we're going to go up 1 over 1, so about there. So it should go through 3 here too, right? And got our slant because it was x, y equals x minus 3. Maybe you want to write this is uh, negative or zero, negative three. This is three comma zero. Okay, intervals of increase and decrease. So we are increasing all the way to negative two. So I guess I need negative two there. So maybe this will be negative two. I am increasing all the way there. And then from negative 2 to 0, I'm decreasing. Well, because when I go up 1 over 1, up 1 over 1, up 1 over 1, when it has a slant of x, everything is uh, 
wherever it goes through the while, go through the X. Because if you go up 3 over 3, up 10 over 10, right? Okay, so we're, we're uh, decreasing there to the asymptote, and then I change to increasing all the way to 1. Oh, just a minute. Oh, yeah, and then I, after 1, I increase again. So I will always be increasing here. But something maybe weird's going on at 1. I do have a slope of 0 at that point, right? So, okay, so I got all that in. Hmm? Okay, then my local max is at negative 2, 6 and 3 quarters. So negative 2, 6 and 3 quarters would be about here, I guess. Which seems really weird when you have, right, stuff going on above it. But it makes sense when you actually start drawing it. Now, we do have some concavity to talk to. We have, we're concave down all the way to the x int, right, which is actually an IP as well. Right, so we're concave down all the way here. Oh, actually, okay, we're going to go concave there and then concave one more little bit. And then as soon as we get to that inflection point, which is also our x-intercept, we're going like this. Okay, anything missing? Oh, good. Okay, so let's talk about just to the, on the left side here. So we have to be increasing and concave down. So that might be something like this, and then we got a max here, and then we're going to be coming down here. Now, when we get to the other side, we've got to be concave down and increasing all the way to the x-intercept. Because I did not draw my line straight, that's going to look horrible. And then at this point, I have a slope of 0 and an inflection point. And now I've got to start going concave up all of a sudden. There it is. How's this? Is this better for you? Okay. So we're doing page 244. 1 ACE. 